High up on the rim of the world, near the top of the globe, in the shadow of the North Pole, lies Alaska. From a corner of Alaska, dipping westward in a long, sweeping curve, the Aleutian Islands stand like a row of boundary stakes that mark off the Bering Sea from the Pacific. In the middle of the Bering Sea lies a cluster of tiny volcanic islands. These are the Pribilof Islands. Hidden by mist the whole year through, these remote specks of land have long been known as the Misty Isles. It's behind this curtain of fog that nature plays out one of her greatest dramas. A story strange as fantasy, yet a story straight from the realm of fact. For this is a true life adventure, the saga of the fur seal. Seal Island, theater for the spectacle, stands ready and waiting for the players to make their annual appearance. For every summer, the fur seal return to these barren shores that they may bear where they were born. They come from no man knows where, from the deeps of the Pacific, from the depths of mystery. Yet come they will in a great unbroken rhythm that has been going on here for untold centuries. The month is May, and the play will soon begin. Meanwhile, out on the treeless tundra, the reindeer await the coming of the players. The foxes, too, are year-round residents. All kinds of them. Blues and silvers, and some a sort of compromise. Each year, nature dresses her stage with the bright colors of spring. Here in the shadow of the Arctic Circle, the average summer temperature is around 50 degrees, and yet these wildflowers somehow manage to thrive. Lupin, bluebells, poppies, many of the wart family, even the delicate violet. And everywhere, the rocks display a colorful blanket of lichens. Bouquets are in place, the stage is set. Everything is ready for the homecoming seal. And here they are. First on the scene are the bulls. These are the monarchs of the herd. Big, burly fellows, they weigh almost as much as a horse. <laughs> been called the seagoing bear. As a matter of fact, they did have a common ancestor. Following a timeless custom, the bulls arrive at the island a month or so before the females. On these cool, foggy beaches, they'll establish their harem, for the seal is polygamous and may have as many as a hundred wives. These first comers are called beach masters. And for good reason. For a beach master must be big enough and strong enough to hold his home site against all comers. When the beach masters move in, the older residents move out. For the next few weeks, the bulls will have nothing to do but wait for the females. 
Once the harem is captured, however, the beachmaster must be always on the alert, for protecting his household becomes a full-time job. There won't even be time for meals. The bull goes through the entire summer without eating. He exists solely on the fat stored up in his immense bull neck. And now, for the moment, a temporary truce prevails as the beachmasters doze and wait and watch the sea. Meanwhile, in the gallery seats along the neighboring cliffs, the migrant birds move in to watch the show and set up summer housekeeping. Wild birds by the thousands. Many of them have flown 3,000 miles to nest here. It's the early bird indeed who gets the best spot on these narrow ledges. While this may not seem like the best spot for a nest egg, to the birds, these forbidding rocks are havens of safety. Here's the firstborn helping his brother out of the shell. This handsome matron is Mrs. Kittywake. Mother and babies are doing well. And they're born hungry. Indeed, Mr. Kittywake spends practically all of his time hunting a fish dinner for the family. Other seaside residents are the puffins. There are several varieties. This one is tufted with sideburns that trail in the breeze. And the horned puffin. Brightly colored and gay, this little fellow with the oversized bill is often called the sea parrot. It takes both wing and claw to hold a perch on this crowded ledge, where there's standing room only, and not much of that. Mother Nature must have dipped into the rainbow when she painted the parrot of the sea. These are the myrrh. The myrrh is sometimes called the Arctic penguin. This pair will soon be proud parrot. They've built no nest, but lay their colorful eggs on the bare rocky ledge. And so a provident nature has tapered the eggs to prevent them from rolling off. The cormorant is one of the colony's most expert fishermen. He's found in various parts of the world, and in the Orient is trained to catch fish for humans. But here, all that he catches, he can keep. Like the seal, these birds come back season after season to the island where they were born. Meanwhile, the vigil of the beachmasters goes on and on. Some grow restless and search for better vantage points. Others wait patiently through the long twilight hours. But now, over Seal Island, an atmosphere of tension has begun to grow. For with the dawn will come the month of June, and with it, the ladies. Yes, here they are at last, right on schedule, swimming and diving playfully as though glad their journey is over but they don't seem in any great hurry to go ashore. Perhaps they're just playing hard to get, taking their time, looking over the prospects, having a final fling of single blessedness. Eventually, however, they must make their choice for better or for worse, so some of them start coming in. Among the welcoming committee, rivalry mounts. Tempers flare as the bulls raise their manly voices to attract the females. The march of the brides continues and competition increases. <laughs> of course, there's always one who just can't make up her mind. The harems are formed by the simple process of rounding up the females and escorting them to the various home sites along the beach. Finally, all the females join the parade to the wedding rocks. There are no old maids on Seal Island.
A caress or two, and another bride is added to the harem. Thus, community life in the colony begins. The beach master, well pleased with himself, settles down to watch over his new wives as they take their beauty naps. Sleeping heads gracefully up. Ah, what more could one wish? A good home, adoring wives, a peaceful paradise. But sometimes there's trouble in paradise. For every now and then, some fickle female manages to elude the watchful eye of her lord and master. This is what happens when an irate husband discovers one of his wives in a neighbor's harem. Maybe she felt she made a mistake in her choice of master, but that makes no difference. Changing one's mind is not a female's privilege up here. <laughs> The truce of the first few days is over. Now every bull must consider all the other males his personal enemies. Fights break out constantly. Fierce, jealous rage among the rivals. Especially if a couple of fighters trespass on another's property. Possession is more than nine points of the law here. Possession is the law. Here's a bull grabbing a wife for himself. He's determined to have a harem even if there's only one bride in it. He's certainly taking no chances. He has her and he's going to keep her. A curious thing about the seal is its playfulness, its sense of fun, developed beyond that of most wild creatures. In the water, of course, they're as graceful and clever as mermaids. But on land, too, they engage in many forms of play. The beach master, of course, doesn't indulge in such foolishness. It's beneath his dignity. The jealous husband still seems to be having his troubles. He's finding out it's one thing to have a bride and another to hold her. Courtship and battle, birth and growth, and replenishment of the species, going on continually among the many rookeries. Yet out of this seeming chaos, a kind of order grows, and the great colony settles down to a comparatively peaceful existence. There are more than 100,000 seal on this one beach. Looks like Coney Island on the 4th of July. Now it's late June, and the rookeries are alive with new babies. Seal Island has become a huge nursery. One pup and only one is born to a mother seal each season. This is the pup from the mating of the previous summer. It's born a few days after mother comes ashore and before she mates again. Seal pups are coal black at birth and weigh from eight to 10 pounds. They're nursed like any other mammal. The baby seal gather in groups or pods for comfort, for safety, and for school. Yes, school. Because they learn by practice what they must know as grown-ups in order to survive. Like all small fry, the baby seal imitate what they see and hear. They fight just like their fathers, make all the proper sounds of battle and huff and puff, and of course, wear each other out. After the pup is born, the beach master relaxes his discipline and allows mother an occasional day off. As a nursing mother, she must eat well and sometimes has to swim a hundred miles or more out to sea in search of herring and squid and pollen. On these long journeys, her life is in constant danger from her mortal enemies, the killer whale and the shark. Meanwhile, it's father's day to look after the kids. 
And here's one who decided to slip away and see the world on his own, the young explorer. The great adventure is barely underway when he suddenly remembers something he forgot, lunch. Well, there's only one answer to that, mother. What's this? Somebody ahead of him? Wrong mother. A mother seal will nurse only her own pup, and she can't be fooled. She always knows her own. So this little fellow will have to keep on looking until he finds the mother he belongs to, or until she finds him, if she finds him. And there are some mighty big ifs in this world where survival is a daily battle. For if mother, in her search for food, has fallen prey to her enemies of the deep, there's real trouble brewing for this youngster. Did we mention trouble? When 800 pounds of blubber parks on your flipper, there's not much you can do about it but yelp. And wait until the big bully makes up his mind to move. Free at last. It's a hard life, this survival of the fittest. There he goes, with an aching flipper, an empty stomach, and a strong desire to get back to his mother. Since no one else will nurse him, let's hope mother comes home soon. For if anything has happened to her, this pup will surely die. There are no orphans on Seal Island. a big ocean out there, and this little fellow had better give it a wide berth. For curiously enough, seal pups are born without knowing how to swim. Careful. Whoop. By the way, what's father doing about this? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now what's this? More trouble? Better look out, one slip here and it's a long, long way down. Ah, here comes Mother at last. She seems to sense that there's trouble afoot, and of course her first thought is for her pup. By some mysterious instinct, she'll be able to recognize him among all the thousands of pups on the island. That is, if she can find him. Father, hmm. cool, calm, and collected. Ah, at last, rescued in the nick of time. Whoops. Well, as a babysitter, father was a total loss. Reunion, and a happy ending, but best of all, lunch. What a day. In the few short weeks before September, when the seal herd will leave the island, the pups must master the art of swimming. For seal pups must learn to swim like any land animal. And so the swimming lesson becomes one of the most important activities of the summer. In a little tidewater pool, they venture their first dip. somewhat cautiously at first. 
But after some trial and error and a ducking or two, they soon learn what their flippers are for. An important part of their schooling is learning to breathe for long submersion. Blowing bubbles in the old swimming hole is all part of their training. Here's a youngster braving the deep on his first practice jump. A very little fellow in a very big, wet world. The males, from two to five years old, are known as bachelors. And bachelors they are indeed. For all the females belong to the beach masters and are members of one harem or another. Free from the burdens of family life, these gay young blades frisk and play at water sports and generally have a good time for themselves. The bachelor's living areas among the rocks and driftwood are usually inland. And this creates a curious situation, for they're completely cut off from the shoreline by the harems of the beach masters. By unwritten law, however, the bachelor is permitted to travel to and from the sea along certain avenues or corridors between the harems. And he's unmolested, so long as he keeps to the straight and narrow. That one bull may have many wives and many bulls none may seem unfair and unjust. But it's nature's way of keeping up the quality of the herd. Only the strongest bull can keep a harem. Only he is fit, according to nature, to propagate the species. And so, living among the bachelors may be found these dethroned monarchs. Once proud beach masters, they've been defeated in bloody combat and have lost their right to rule over a harem. These are the saddest of all failures. Compelled to remain on the sidelines, minus wives, minus family, Minus everything. And so constantly faced with these sad reminders that only the fit may survive, the young bulls spend much of their time training for the one big event of their lives, the day when they can challenge the beach master for a right to a harem. Right now, the youngsters are hardly a match for the veteran bulls. They'll have to wait till they're six years old and fully grown. Meantime, they become one another's sparring partners. They shadow box, lunge and parry, dodge and feint, until they know all the vulnerable spots, the throat, the eyes, and especially the flipper. For a disabled flipper may well turn the tide of battle when the going gets rough. It's rough and tumble and no holds barred through every waking hour as the young bachelor trains for his big day. And that day must inevitably come. Sooner or later, the young bull will tire of single blessedness. Well, on Seal Island, to become a family man, the harem must be taken by force. The youngster must pit his few brief years of training against all the experience and savage fury of a veteran beachmaster. But no matter the odds, the primitive urge for battle cannot be denied. Recklessly, he oversteps the bounds, enters forbidden territory. There he goes, the challenger. The beachmasters growl their warning. Instantly, the whole island is alerted. Here comes the charge. of a dozen battles, the older bull has plenty of experience. But this time, youth and speed and power prove too much for him, and he's forced to give ground. The tide of battle turns. 
quick to sense the change, the other harem bulls suddenly turn on their former comrade and help the challenger clinch his victory. Driven out by his kind, battle-scarred and bloody, the old beachmaster seeks the healing waters of the Arctic Sea. He's had his day and youth must be served. And so, a new beachmaster. The king is king no more. Long live the king. On Seal Island, the days pass, the swift, hectic summer days. June, July, August. By September, the great fur seal host has completed its birth cycle once more. Again, the herd sets out on its long migration, heading southward into the Pacific, through the Aleutian Passes, beyond Unamak and the island of the Four Mountains, convoying the new generation, swimming no man knows where. Yes, once more, the players in the great spectacle vanish into mystery. And Mother Nature rings down her curtain of mist on another true life adventure, the saga of Seal Island.